So the first thing we're going to do is cut out our square for the blocks. And in this project, we're using an eight and a half inch square. I just happen to have an eight and a half inch ruler, uh, but if you don't, that's okay. You can still use uh, any size that's bigger than eight and a half. Uh, so in this case, this is a 12 and a half that I have marked with clear tape. Uh, and that's just so that I can see what I'm going to cut and what's going to be over along the seams that I can applique later. So in this case, I'm going to, just because it's a little easier, I'm going to use my, well, also a little easier to see, I'm going to use my eight and a half. So this one, uh, in the block I did on the quilt, it was about here-ish was the square that I cut out. I'm going to do it a little differently this time and I'm going to make I want this one to be like sort of in the middle of my block and then I'll, I'll be able to applique parts of the mermaid's purse and also some of this kelp and have some of those little pieces sticking out uh, and then I can decide what else I want to add to that too I could add down here sides it's it's really up to you at that point um, but I want this, I know that I want to do that much. So I'm going to put that along the seam there. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And try to cut as little extra as you have to, because you never know when you might need, you know, I could have just cut straight through, but I might need that purse later. Uh, so I'm going to not cut through that one. And then I'm going to turn my fabric around and cut my other two sides. If you have a rotating cutting mat, that's even better. Then you don't have to pick your fabric up. So I'll cut my other two sides here. And that's not going to be of use. So that I can definitely just cut off and get rid of. But as you can see, you're going to end up with some Swiss cheese fabric. Uh, and that's okay, but you do want to make sure you have enough motifs left over that you can use for the applique part. So I now have my square. Uh, actually, it'll go this way. I guess this is right side up. So I'm going to quickly piece some sashing around it so that I can proceed to the next steps. So I will be right back. Okay, so now I have my block pieced. Uh, this looks a little bit different than yours because uh, it's just a block, it's not the full quilt. Um, but this will give you an idea on how to produce the, the same look. So I have my, my block in the sashing. Now I need to look for this motif uh, that I want to applique on top. Luckily, this is a pretty small repeat. So this and this are actually the same uh, mermaid's purse. These two are actually the same. So that's less than eight inches. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier. So here I can see that this is the same as this. I can, I, first I look for where the kelp crosses and I can also see where I cut it out right there. Uh, so that gives me a clue. And then I just go over to the next one um, so I'm going to want, so the reason I can't just cut this out because I've lost some in the seam allowance. So you can't, I mean, it actually, it doesn't look terrible, but you can see here where the two little points don't line up. So that wouldn't work very well if I were, if I tried to just cut this out and applique it on because I've lost that quarter inch. So I also don't want to just have a straight line where the seam is. Your eye's going to go right to that and you're going to see it immediately. So what I want to do is cut out pretty generously around this shape and I'm going to cut down into this as well. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to stop the applique yet. So I want to give myself more, more, you know, motif um, than I know that I'm going to need so that I can make that decision later and I don't end up with a hole in in between. So I'm using my favorite scissors. The well for detail work, my favorite scissors. I have a lot of scissors, favorite scissors. Uh, these are the Fiskars five inch um, spring loaded micro tip something or other. Um, so I'm just gonna loosely cut around. 
and I want to get both of these kelp leaves and I want to get these tips of seaweed. So I don't need this guy though. Um, and I have plenty, so I have, I'm not actually going to need anything close to down here, I don't think, so I can just cut straight across that. Whoops. Okay, and now if I put this right on top, it'll give me an idea, yeah, there we go, of, of what it's going to look like when it's finished. So now what I have to do, whoops, sorry about that, um, I'm going to put fusible on the back of this piece and then I'm going to cut all of these tiny little shapes out and it looks like I did actually cut off the tip of that although I might not have cut off the tip well it doesn't really matter it'll that tip will just end there at this point um but so right now I need to put the fusible on this and I could go ahead and I could pick as many others as I wanted that's not exactly where that goes but something so I could, you know, find this piece and add that or this little guy. So again, I'm looking for where, if I wanted to find those, where that crosses. So it would be this that goes here. So I can't use that piece. Can't use that piece. Can I use this one? Is that the same? Yeah, so this is the same as this. So I could that one gets a little bit cut off I could yeah I can use that right there and plug it in here um, that one is there one of those so it's this one this one ah so right here this is where I could get it so in this case I could get this one is right there and those three are right here so for fun, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go around these pieces of kelp. And let's see, did I, I wanted this one too, right? That's that one and it connects to that. So yeah, so that's the last one I wanna get. And I don't need any of this. But just to be on the safe side, I will cut out this entire mermaid purse. I know I'm not going to need the whole thing, um, but just in case. Better to have more than not enough. And actually, maybe I do want that mermaid purse because it would go something like this. So I'm not going to keep the kelp, um, but I do want these green seaweed or that maybe that's backward Maybe the green is the kelp and the yellow seaweed. I'm not really sure But regardless, I want the green pieces here And on this side, I'm going to keep the yellow and the green So now that I have the pieces that I want to applique I need to get some fusible web so that I can apply it to the back. Let me go grab that Okay, so now I have my fusible web. This is heat and bond light. You do want a lightweight fusible, um, something that you can sew through, uh, which this one you can, because um, you don't want it to be too, add too much bulk. Um, so this is the paper side. So there's a side that's kind of shiny and has a grid kind of texture on it. You can kind of feel that's the glue side, the adhesive side. And then there's a paper side as well. It's easier um, to use to work on the paper side first. However, you need to make sure that you don't trace your motif right side up because I need to put the back of the fabric to the back, the glue side of the fusible, which means I need to turn my fabric over so that it will fit. And believe me, I've done it plenty of times the wrong way and had to redo it. Um, and I have all these weird shapes because I've already done this a few times. Um, so I'm just going to kind of place that there and trace around it. And you can go ahead and write on the paper side. You can do whatever you want. Uh, the glue side you would not want to trace onto. I don't even know if you can, but it would be very difficult. So just kind of loosely trace that. 
and then I'm gonna try to squeeze this one. Can I squeeze this one in here? Nah, we'll just put it up there. So same thing, it's uh, right side down and I'm just going to loosely trace around it. Does not have to be perfect because I'm not actually gonna cut on the line anyway. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm gonna get my paper scissors and I'm going to cut inside this line because I don't want the fusible to go outside off the fabric. I want it to be inside just a little bit so that I don't get it all over my ironing board and my iron and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna cut inside this line. Then I can check it and make sure that it's going to cover all the pieces I want to cover. Does it go all the way to the edge here? Not quite, but I can just move it up. So there we go. So now I can apply it right there and it covers all of the little green things that I want to cut. I want to make sure there's fusible all the way to the edge there because that's such a small piece of fabric. I need the whole thing to have adhesive. So I'm going to set that one aside for right now and I'm going to go back and cut this one out. And it doesn't have to be exact and you can, even if you do cut it a little bit too small you can always you know take some of these little scraps and apply it uh, where you're missing and that'll be totally fine. Okay, so let's check this one here. There we go. Looks pretty good. Yep, I can get that one. Make sure, because I want to get this and that. So I do want to try to get it all the way to the edge, which I didn't quite make over here. So, like I just said, I can take... Actually, this piece right here might do it. Cut a little scrap of that and... I can just apply it right there, turn it over. Yeah, that'll that'll be perfect. I can just stick that right on that little corner and it will cover the edge of that uh, seaweed. So I am going to go use the iron and press these down. Uh, your fusible does come with instructions, so if you haven't used it before, you can uh, check the instructions on the package. Okay, so I have my two pieces here. One's going to go there. This one is going to go here. Uh, both have fusible uh, applied to the back, so the paper is still on it. I'm going to leave it on for the moment, um, but then I, you know, I just want to kind of check my placement here. I'm going to start cutting this one. Before I start cutting, I want to see where a good place to join um, or where where it's going to overlap is going to be because like I said I don't want to just cut in a straight line it's just not going to look very good it'll probably start fraying along that edge and your eye is going to go right to it so I want to look for a place where there's already a line that I can cut along and since I do want to follow I don't want I want to keep the I don't know what those are called, the hooks I guess of the mermaid's purse the easiest thing to do is probably just to cut right along the edge of the purse, at least in this part. When I get up here, I might want to cut somewhere else. Um, let's see, do I want to keep that one? That one's going to just barely be over the edge. So I'm not going to bother with that guy. So probably right along that edge for all of these pieces of, of kelp, that's probably gonna be where I wanna cut that, which means I have to come into the purse and cut somewhere, probably, probably just kind of follow this and just cut right there so that I can keep these two hooks 
but cut those off. So that means it's going to follow this and then come down around here. Oh wait, no, because I, I want to keep that one. So I don't want to cut. So, I, okay, so I'll cut down here around this and then, well, I'm not sure yet, but that's okay. I can go ahead and start cutting what I do know. And then once I can kind of put it on top, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to tell what the next step is. So let's go ahead, move this out of the way and start cutting. Okay, get all those scraps out of here. And let's check our work. Oops, I forgot that one. All right, well, I can come back and get that in a second. Let's see how it's looking. So I just want to make sure everything's lining up. Looking pretty good. So let's see. So yeah, I could actually, that probably does make the most sense to just cut right there. Or does it? Well, now that I've started. Yes, but then I still have to. All right, well, regardless, or should I just leave it the way it is? Okay, what I think I'm gonna do is kind of, yeah, I'm gonna cut these green ones off. Okay, so each of those is going to go up here, and then, so that looks good there, I think, yeah, I think kind of following the, see how they're, I'm not sure you can, but there's sort of a circular uh, line drawing in here, I'm just going to sort of follow that. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a weird shape, and it probably doesn't actually need to go that far. Yeah, something like that. That looks pretty good. Well, once it gets lined up. Um, so I just have to finish cutting this, and then that one will be ready to use. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. And because it isn't just right along the seam, no one is going to be able to tell. So these green pieces here, the end of the applique matches up with where the seaweed meets the purse, which is a perfect place to do that. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So now for our other one, let's see, this one goes here. So let's see. So I wanna try to avoid cutting out all of these inner pieces if I can, just cause it's a pain. Um, so I said, let's see, where do we have to stop? So I do wanna make sure I get those two and I want to get this part of the kelp to there. So that's a perfect place to cut that one. Yep. So if I can cut, maybe I'll just 
follow this because I don't need the green. Okay, so I'm going to cut along here. I'll most likely end up cutting that off later too, but for right now, that's good. Okay, so then I can cut around these. Lost a little piece of my seaweed, but that's okay. I can fuse it. Just fuse it separately. Okay, so if I check this. All right. And then that'll go there. Somewhere like that. Okay, so I still need to cut out in between there and those pieces it looks like i think i'm okay with all of these though well actually that's not a piece so just these those will all be okay but i do have to cut out all of that I'm just going to put cut this little piece off because it's just too fiddly. And that's fine. If there's something that you just can't make work, don't worry about it. No one else is going to know. Okay, and that whole little, so I'm just going to cut right under this bulb. That'll be fine. This paper is starting to come off. If the paper starts to come off or it's giving you trouble, just peel it off. It's fine. All right, so that one will go there. That one goes there. This guy was going to go here. Okay, once I finish cutting them out. So still have this part and those sections in there. And then I can probably, actually, you know what? I can just cut this right along, right along the edge of the purse. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yep. So that, so sometimes once you start cutting, you know, the lines will, the cutting lines will just sort of start to reveal themselves to you. Um, so that's what I was hoping would happen there, and it did. Well, then let's see, is there anything else I could cut off to make my life easier? Doesn't really look like it. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it. I'm just going to cut out this blue, and then we're ready to go for this one. Let's see how we did here. Pretty good. Okay. So you want to get as much of that background blue as you can, but I mean, some of it is just so small. You just do the best you can. Okay, let's do this. Oh, 
All right, and that was the little piece that came off over here. So if I want to keep that, I don't have to keep it. I mean, nobody's going to know if I just left that off, but we'll give it a shot. I don't know if it'll actually stick, um, but we can try. And then these go here. About like that. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. So when I go to fuse this, um, you can use a pressing sheet if you're worried about it. Well, first of all, you want to get all these other little scraps. Don't cut right on top of your piece uh, when you're doing this, especially, you know, if you've peeled the paper off, there is fusible on the back of these. So some of these little scraps will stick to your piece when you go to fuse it. So make sure that those aren't on the piece uh, before you go to press. Um, and you, like I said, you can use a pressing sheet, but it actually makes it much more difficult because every, as soon as you put something on top of it, they move just a little and then it doesn't line up perfectly. So what I like to do, um, I like to make sure it's all lined up or, you know, as best as I can. And like for this one, I'm going to hold it out here and I'm going to press this first where it has to match what's underneath it. So I'm just going to touch the iron to that. And then once that part is okay, then I move out because this out here doesn't matter as much if it's, you know, if it moves a little bit one way or the other, but what you don't want is for these pieces here to move with the actual uh, art underneath where that could show. And then you get weird things happening. So you want to make sure the part on top is fused first. So I would hold it here and then just hold my iron down there for just a second and then continue to fuse the rest once once the parts on top of the block are 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 fused. So, so now the pieces are fused. So when I pick them up, you can see that they stay stuck. So now we have this nice block where it looks like the artwork or the motifs are coming outside of the pieced square, which is a nice uh, effect. Um, and let's see if I can get it closer. So as you can tell, it's not that easy to tell where the joins are. And that is completely on purpose. So for this one, yeah, so the whole purse up to here is all still there. So, and I then I just followed the edge of this seaweed or kelp or whatever, and then followed the edge of that purse and makes it almost invisible. So that is how you make an outside the block. And one more thing. So when, um, there's two ways you could do this. You could then come back and stitch around these before quilting it or you could you know baste it as you normally would and then as you're quilting you stitch around these shapes and i would recommend doing that just to reduce the amount of stitching you have because some of these are just so fine you don't want to have you know you don't want to stitch them down once and then quilt over it that sort of thing so just to make your life a little bit easier uh, just wait until you do your quilting and then do both at the same time. And that has an added benefit of sort of highlighting the motifs that you've just done. And I have an example of that, a finished quilt that uses this same technique uh, using K-Facet fabrics that I made some time ago. Um, so this one it was done in the exact same way. It's a bigger repeat. So it's really just one image that, that comes out. And then, so it was applique on the exact same way we just did. But as the quilting was being done, um, quilted all around all of these edges. And also went ahead and went around all of the leaves and inside the stem. Um, so that it, again, it all looks like on purpose and sort of gives you that kind of um, 3D effect. So hopefully you can see the stitching there. 
and free motion is really the best way to do this. Uh, I'm not sure how you would do it with a walking foot. If you were really determined, I'm sure you could, but uh, free motion is really a way to go. This is just about the only time I do free motion, uh, but it is worth it. And, and all I do is just follow what is in the artwork in the prints. Um, you can see another one down here. So same thing, just around the applique and then sort of inside the flowers as well to kind of highlight the image imagery that's already there in the prints. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and you have a beautiful outside the blocks quilt. Thank you.